I don't know, just I, when I wrote the question number three, when I saw, um, I compared with the question number two, I saw my answer is similar. So I thought maybe it's wrong, or I have dog actually, I'm not sure, but later on you can see my answer. And so let me explain a little bit about this, right? So when you say um, include a set of at least two instances, so that means you need to declare at least two new instances. So let's say, uh, for example, uh, give me one class. Like, uh, what are the classes that you create? some prefix for something, right? Let's say example.com. And you declare, let's say, um, define process. So if you say uh, use
So this is one example of uh, how to define the classes and uh, properties for your ontologies. Similarly, it depends on like what are the classes in your domain that you want to model them in that year. Okay. So this is how you can define the classes and the uh, uh, class hierarchy and this are the properties similarly for um, property hierarchy. So back to your questions about question number two and three. So in that question two, we need to create <coughs> a set a set of instances, right? And then we need to create triples for them. So um, To write that one? Yeah. Okay. And the car. <laughs> so this is this class of which class? Uh, and you can define like uh, some other triples for these instances, right? So you need to create at least two or three instances like this mm -hmm. and then assert the relations between them. Like uh, some music band playing some song, for example, right? And for the question number three, for the questions number three, Questions are different, so in that we need to specify the domain and range of the properties. For example, what are the domain and range of where your property? This one. You need to specify the domain and range of place from or members of. Domain is some um, which children. And similarly, you need to define like all the domain and range for all the properties. And then apply the rules for the class hierarchy and property hierarchy to infer at least new triples, at least two new triples. So do you have the set of uh, area triples for your ontology? You have, right? So if possible, you can take your laptop and then like we'll go through this um, again. Like maybe I will try to finish uh, 10 or 15 minutes before so that we can have some time to practice on the exercise number three.
So let me recap what we had so far. So in the uh, second homework, we need to create a set of uh, reports for your ontologies, right? Like any domain that you choose, that you, you are comfortable with. But <coughs> even though like we, we are modeling the knowledge from different domains, the requirements for the second homework is same. So in that, you need to create a certain uh, number of classes, property, uh, instances, uh, class hierarchy, property hierarchy, and uh, how to apply the rule to inform new knowledge. Okay? So in that, um, let's say, for now, I think like all of you will have like uh, the triples for yourself. So <coughs> the purpose of this class is to learn how to write Sparkle. So there are two parts of this. First is to write your triples into the Sparkle endpoint. And the second part of that is to write a Sparkle query to retrieve some of your information. So given that you already have the uh, set of triples, right, keep that aside. So in this class, I will go through um, some very basic example of Sparkle where you can insert your triples into a, a triple endpoint and uh, learn how to write your query. Right? The, um, this is the Sparkle endpoint that we will use for this class. So you may want to, uh, oh, can you see the name? The, the URL? Can you post that online? Can you change? At least in the slide. Okay. Or okay. uh, in the homework okay. three. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in this, what I will, I will use one uh, set of examples and then insert them into this uh, triple store. And then like when we go through the sample queries, we will execute them against this triple store. So it will be like, uh, by example. So the name of that is this, if you need It is at the uh, K project, but it's K P R J uh, hyphen bin hyphen one and that plus is the Porsche eighteen ninety sparkle. So this is the sparkle point that you want to prepare for this class and the homework. <coughs> So in the, uh, let me recap the uh, previous class. So in the previous class, <coughs> we went over the RDF, RDFS. So in that, we know how to create the RDF triples and the how to define the classes and property for your triples, right? So let, if you look at the uh, semantic web cake, you will see that uh, we are we already finished this uh, RDF, RDFS, and today the topic of the class is the Sparkle. So for the RDF and RDFS, there are many proposals for querying the RDF. So prior to uh, 2008, there are many, like these are the list of uh, candidates. Some of them, like these are some of them, like R, D, Q, L, or uh, S, E, R, Q, L. So the basic idea of that is similar to the structure langu query language like S, Q, L. But here they extend those, the extend those uh, query language to support the query of idea. So the difference of the uh, S, Q, L and the Sparkle, or like any of these language in the in that. The RDF query language, it supports <coughs> path queries, where we need to specify the path within the graph. And the path means like a, a set of uh, triples uh, that are connected. 
but we we are not going to uh, go over any of these language. We just know that just, uh, some of the names of those. So in, in this, Sparkle means, I think Sparkle stands for Sparkle Protocol and IDF Query Language. It's weird, right? Because it, it is a recursive like, definition. So then, what is this? What is that? What is this? What is this? What does this mean? Like Sparkle within the, the Sparkle, right? So we can say that it is a structured path and uh, something better language. Just they didn't give a name of that, they just gave it. It's weird to me. But basically, Sparkle is the query language that is recommended a standard for uh, the semantic web community by W3C. So in this, it defines the syntax of the query language, what are the keywords, what are the uh, structure or the construct that we need to use in the Sparkle queries. And in addition to the, um, the query language, they also define the uh, Sparkle protocol and Sparkle query result format. So in that, in the uh, Sparkle protocol, similar. So what is that Sparkle protocol? So similar to the uh, say HTTP or a swap protocol, right? The Sparkle protocol it defined the procedure that the client and the server can communicate. So the because we are operating on a web environment, right? The basic architecture of the web is the client and side server side, where the client send a request to the server and get a response. So that is the, the protocol that supports the Sparkle queries. So one example of that is the Sparkle endpoint that I just saw you, I just show you. This is one a uh, Sparkle endpoint, and this uh, web browser. So in this, this uh, Sparkle endpoint, the address of that is at the port eighty eight ninety, and Sparkle is is a, basically is a web application, where here is the client side where we can type the Sparkle queries, right? This is the client side. There is another server side that that receive the Sparkle queries, executed, get the result, and then send it to the client side. If you look at this side, you can see that the result format that is support. There are many of them. There may be HTML, XML, JSON, or Entropos, or CSV, or TSV. Yes? The data is stored in, uh, in the database or? Uh, yes. So, what we are seeing on the web interface is the client, right? And uh, th in this client, we can uh, compose our Sparkle queries. When you send, run the queries, what it does in the back of this? What it does is, it will send this query into one, one point, where the Sparkle queries will be executed by the query engine. Right, let's say there's a, this is the address, um, this is the ID of the server, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the address of the server. What it does is, the server, there's a virtual so a server instance running at this server, will receive the queries and result a response. To be render, the, the result will be rendered by the web client side. So for example, if I run, some queries. It doesn't return any uh, results because we haven't inserted any uh, triples yet. For that, I just show you like uh, the client side for us to type the Sparkle queries, right? 
So when you uh, when you do your homework or when you run the examples from the site, you go into that that place, pass the query into that, and get the result. So for for this class, we will use a set of uh, reports as our example uh, knowledge base. So this uh, sample ontology is created from the previous class, where we have uh, a machine that is the Web 3.0, a machine is a professor, and Web 3.0 is a course. And uh, we also specify the domain and range of the properties here. Additionally, we also have the uh, Web 3.0 is uh, offered in some time which is represented as a blank node, and that time is 2014 as a year, and a form as a semester. So we will use the, the, the whole set of triples for our example, how to write the queries on top of these uh, ontologies. So before we start, we will go over some of the basic concepts, like, let's assume that no, not, not as soon. Let's say that uh, we, each of you, we have one RDF dataset, right? Because the RDF dataset is just like a set of triples. So wait, when you have them, and you want to put them into um, the same sparkling point, I just gave you one sparkling point, right? That all of, all of you need to use them. But let's think, when all the triples, I put into the same triple store and then how do you know who created which triple right so in order to capture that kind of information in the triple store they come up with a concept like RDF datasets and RDF name graph so there are two there are two possible definitions for RDF dataset the simplest one is to ignore the name graph, say that um, RDF dataset is a set of triples. So what you have is an RDF dataset. And uh, what you have is another RDF dataset. So if we have 14 uh, students in the class, we have 14 RDF datasets, right? Plus the sample ontologies that we have, we have like 15 RDF datasets. So that is one point of view. Another point of view is we need to split or we, we need to split those area triples of the same data set into one group. So let's say um, we say that the, the second according to that, the second definition of area data set is say area data set is a set of graph. And then within the set of graph we have one unnamed graph that is default and then in the rest of the graph all of them there must be named graph that means each graph is associated with a URI so uh, if we apply if we apply them into our case we, if we have like only one idea of data set right and then we have like 14 name graph and the triples from your data set will be put into one separate name graph. So in total we have 14 name graphs or 15 including our example. So in this example, in this, uh, in this, in the scope of this, we will use one name graph, uh, noises.write.edu, courses, Web 3.0 examples. So this is the URI to store all the triples from our example. And for name graph, we say that like uh, RDF name graph is defined as a set of triples. So for example, if uh, our exam has uh, five triples like this, RDF the, uh, if we want to insert this set of triples into the sparkle into the sparkle endpoint, so this is the query. 
So this is the syntax. This is one example of the insert query. I gave it in the beginning so that we can have uh, the we can have example to run our our Sparkle queries. So in this in this query, start with the prefix. So in in your in your on your purpose, if you use any prefix, you specify them here. And if you notice the difference in the syntax of uh, total and a Sparkle query, so in that there is no X sign in the beginning, right? And there is no uh, period at the end. So the syntax of them are a little bit different. So after you define the prefix, you use the insert into keyword to say that this is an insert statement. So insert into, this is the, our name graph. Insert into this name graph, the set of triples. Right? And notice that the set of triples here, you can use them a, the, the format of them. They must be either total or uh, n triples. It can be any other format, according to the specification of a Sparkle. Right? If you if you execute this uh, queries, this is the result that you have. So if I copy them. The, that set of triples and run the queries. So this is the result. It says that insert into this graph uh, eight or less triples. Similarly, let's say from a uh, homebook tool, you have a set of triples, right? Try to insert your triples into the same uh, sparkle point. Oh, I say it's, it's uh, within the rice state network. Yes. It has to be on the wire. Yeah. Because of that uh, specific server. Mm -hmm. Or you can escape. I mean, uh. Escape? Not escape. SSH? Mm -hmm. No, you cannot use that using your VPN. VPN. I tried it. Yeah. VPN didn't That's work. No VPN, no uh, Wi-Fi, just wire network. So I need to go in. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's why I need to come yeah. and prepare the wire. Because this server is this is um, a virtual server. It is a, a virtual server. It's not a physical server, and they, it is put in another network. So I don't know the configuration of that specified by the system admin. But here, right here, you can use uh, this wire to finish it. So after you insert your query, your triples into the graph, right? You can verify the set of triples actually store in the server. Indeed, they may look slightly different from what you specify. For example, so this is the query that help us to verify the contents of the graph, right? So in this, we say select SPO, means subject, predicate, and object, from our name graph. And in the where class, you specify the conditions. In this case, the conditions is very simple in the way that SPO form a triple. If you run this,
It will show you a set of uh, triples. And if you notice the blank note here, oh, I think I did it twice. So for the blank note, it is not underscore colon ID, right? In the in this case, it shows you that note ID and then like colon slash slash this one and then some some <coughs> number. So why is it why is it happening like that? Yeah. So this shows you that the blank node is specific to one certain implementation, right? Because the semantic of the blank node is not shared or is not specified in the formal semantic. So it, because of that, each implementation um, specifies it in a different way. So in this case, we are using Virtuoso. And this is the way Virtuoso say that this is a blank node, right? So because of that, we have uh, more number of triples than we need. So by using the two queries, one is insert query, the other one is select query, you can insert your set of triples into the this buffering point and verify the content of them, right? So uh, from the homework, if you read the homework, you say that each of you will specify one name frag and only populate that name frag. So these are the two queries that help you to set up the the initial triples so that you can run your Sparkle query against. So back to the uh, so now we back to the uh, topic like how do we create the how do we write the Sparkle queries? So back to the old uh, knowledge that uh, each area triples contains or is comprised of uh, three elements, subject, predicate, and object. And um, we also need to follow to the rules saying that the subject it must be instance of uh, URIs or blank node, and the predicate must be instance of a uh, URI. And the object, it must be either, it, it may be URI, blank node, or literal. So you remember this rule, right? If you, um, the rules are for the syntax of your area triples. If if one of them is violated, then the you can you can find the errors from the validator. So there, if we if we want to specify the elements of the triples, we have to say either URI, blank node, or literal. Like we need to repeat them many times, right? There's another way to uh, give them a name so that when you refer to um, elements of a triples, we say uh, added term. So one added term, it can be either like a literal URI or plain node. So added term is the common name for URI, plain node, or literal. So from now on, we can say that um, added triples comprise of uh, three added terms, subject and Subject, predicate, and object. We need this. We need this for uh, constructing the Sparkle queries. So we start with a uh, question. What are the causes taught by uh, emission? Based on the uh, simple ontologies that we had before, there are many questions we can ask on top of that. So this is so for the process of constructing the queries, right? First, you come up with uh, questions in mind. 
what do you want to ask about this? So in this in this earlier proposal, we have only like uh, eight or ten triples, right? So if you look at the earlier, if you look at them, you immediately get the result. But just imagine that the earlier triples, you have the number of them is like billions or millions that you cannot see uh, yourself. So in that, you need to. You need to translate your questions into the spark question facts. And let's say, let's say this. This is the data triple that we have. And the shape that just were pre right? And if you want to say that one of the causes have by double shape. So in that case, what we do is we will replace the word free for no with the <coughs> variable, with a question mark and cause. So, if you look at this triple, it just says every shape which is one cause with three for no, right? But out of this, what we want to get is the triple pattern. Where we say, if we don't know the, if we don't know the, the list of causes, we put a question mark and then the name of that, like any name. So when the Sparkle queries include these triple patterns and execute against the set of triples, what it does is it will match these graph patterns with the, with the RDF triples that you have here and return the result. And the result, like for example, in this case, web 3 would be valid to would be valid to the variable cost. So this is a very simple example to start with. Okay. So in this, this is this is called graph pattern. In the in the uh, Sparkle processing, right? It will match these patterns with all the subgraphs of your RDF dataset and return them as the binding for the variable. So in the select queries, what we, what it does is it will return all the set of all the set of uh, resources binding for the variable. Because this is a very simple example, in the Sparkle you can specify. Uh, from very simple condition to even like uh, very com complex conditions on the triple pa on the triple patterns of graph patterns. So we will go over uh, this part how to create a more sophisticated uh, or more complex graph patterns. So in this. You you can can you distinguish the uh, difference between the array triples and triple patterns? So how are they different? How do you distinguish distinguish them? We're giving more. in the previous slide, area triples uh, comprise of subject, predicate, and object. And uh, subject, predicate, object are area terms. Okay. And if you look at this, so this is called area triples, right? 
this is called triple patterns. If you look at if you look at uh, the two of them, you see that uh, the only difference in the triple patterns is the variable. Because in the triple patterns, we can spe specify the variable where we can get on the result binding for that variable. So that is the only difference between the triple patterns and the regular triple. So here we say that the area of triple patterns it is also adding triples where the subject predicate and object it can either be a variable or adding term. So adding term it can be a URI plain node or literal. And to specify the triple patterns, you replace one of them, or some of them, or all of them, from added term, you change from added term into a variable. For example, so if you look at this uh, triple patterns, we have that added shape is uh, is added term, right? <coughs> the change is also a uh, term and cos is a variable. So this is the simple Sparkle queries that is translated from these questions. So the question is, uh, what are the causes taught by Appleship? And this is the query. It starts with the select from and where, which is very similar to the uh, SQL, right? Yes? Why do you have to identify the three in the presence? You want to know all the courses, right? Yes. We want to know all the courses. Mm -hmm. So why do we have to identify all three on the prefix in the top? So this is just the prefix to shorten the URI, right? This is the prefix uh, X, and I use X to shorten the URI of uh, nurses that write at ADU courses with pre below then I'm shared. My question is why do we have to put uh, all three at the end? If we want to know all the courses, all three is only one course, right? Like in a scale, it's two it's different like courses. Okay. One's a URI, the other one's data. Yeah. Oh. So I was, I was, I was going to say, oh. So I was saying that the structure of the, of this specific Sparkle queries is very similar to the SQL, right? It starts with the select class. In SQL, you select uh, a set of attributes separated by comma, right? So in this case, we have, uh, we after select is a set of a uh, list of variables. And in SQL, we have from, we say from where? From? Yeah, from a table or a joint of uh, multiple tables, right? But in the case, in our case, we have only name graph. So intuitively, you can say that the it, the, the corresponding unit of uh, Sparkle is the name graph, which is uh, corresponding to uh, tables in the SQL. Similarly, in the where class, we specify the conditions on the attribute Right. In this case, we specify the graph patterns would be matched against the original area of data set. So, in this query, we say that select the causes from this name graph where double shared purchase cause and cause is a variable. That's why we need to select them like for the result. So this is the generalized 
Sparkle query for this example. So in this, the query starts with a prefix. After that, we specify the prefix name. In this case, we have x and the URI of the prefix. You can have multiple uh, prefix for a single query. And here, from the select columns, we have select a set of variables separated by, uh, by a space or tag, by the blank. And in the from, we can specify the URI of the name graph. This is the name graph. And within the where clause, the graph patterns and close within the uh, curly brackets. So this is the, uh, a brief syntax of the Sparkle query for this one. If it is timings also, if you want even the course and timings, then uh, should we include the timings even in wave class? Yes. So this is a very uh, basic triple pattern saying that uh, like the Napa shortage some cause. If you want to say that the that cause is over in like maybe 2014 in the fall, you, speci you specify additional triple patterns here within the, within the triple patterns separated by the dot. But we will go over that like in the next uh, in, the, in the next example. So for the same questions, right, there are two different syntax that we can use. The second one is to use, to specify the name graph within the where class. So why do we need this one? We need this, we need to specify the name graph within the where class if we want to query multiple name graphs. Additionally, we want to specify the graph patterns for each name graph. So you can imagine that we can imagine that within the where class, right? This is the graph and the URI of the graph one. And and the next specify the triple patterns restricted for this graph. Using the same syntax you can include multiple graphs and their triple patterns within the where class. If you specify the if you specify the name graph with the within the where class, right, it will be ambiguous like which triple patterns is applicable for which name graph. Because of that, we use this syntax. And mostly I use this uh, syntax for all of queries. This is the this is the comparison of the two syntax. One is to specify the name graph within the firm class, and the other one is to specify the, the name graph within the uh, where class. Both of them produce the same result, just different syntax. So back to your questions that if we have a more uh, complex conditions to impose on the graph patterns, so how do we translate them into Sparkle? So this is the uh, the area triples that specify the that express the knowledge that and share the just web three model, and then this cause is offered in some time and that. That is 2014 as a year and fall as a semester. So we know that this is the, the triples, the added triples to express the knowledge that we have. So we say that uh, similar to similar to the uh, previous example, right? We say that when we have the specific uh, resource we put that as a variable and when we say that when what are the causes that means we don't know the cause yet right and then we say we specify that as a variable like web 
like uh, some cars like this. So we start with emission, which is some cars instead of with 3.0, right? And then because we don't know the variable um, cost, we put that we put addition in the next triples. We also replace the variable with a specific term or specific adjective term. So here we have the cost variable cost offered in some term. I don't know. And then that term, his year is uh, also variable. A semester also variable. The four triples express the conditions that the cost is taught by Dr. Shet, right? However, we have one extra condition here saying that like the process must be after 2013. Uh, can you see this triple? Okay. Uh, so in order to express that conditions, we use the filter statement of patterns here. We say that the year, that one, this year's, it must be greater than 2013. And the, this year, this is the uh, functions, auxiliary functions that allows you to get the describe the year out of a uh, date. If you look at the, that uh, that one, access the G year, right? We need to extract the number. So the type of that is a year, but here we need to get like 2014 is a number because. We cannot compare. So here, this is a numerical number, like um, string, right? So we need to get the number from here, let's say like 20, in this case, 2014, and we will perform the evaluation or comparisons. This triple patterns, this set of uh, triple patterns that form the graph patterns for this Sparkle query. So next, we will we'll go over and see like uh, how do we come up with this one. If you look at this, actually, like uh, they have different name for this. So the four triples, they are uh, triple patterns, and this is for filtering uh, patterns. And there are two more. There are two more uh, patterns we can specify. Additionally, like optional and alternative patterns. All of them will, can be specified within the where class, not anywhere else. So this is one graph patterns, and the first four triples are uh, triple patterns, and this is filtering patterns. Additionally, you can see that for each patterns, it may be like uh, it, any other patterns, triple pattern filtering or alternative, like all of them, they can be combined within the within a query multiple times. There is no limitation on the number of triple patterns or filtering patterns that we can specify in the query. You can specify as long as as detailed as you want. So we start with the first graph patterns. So this, the the four triples patterns that we have here, it is called uh, basic graph patterns. So in this uh, basic graph patterns, indeed, um, it is a sequence of triple patterns, right, separated by a period. First triple and period at the end. Second triple pattern and period. So this is the basic graph patterns. They say that this is the basic graph pattern because like within the Sparkle query, at least one triple pattern must be specified. For the select query, other queries you may not need to. And this is the sparkle queries that we say 
Stack of Ferry for the persons that water the passes and their schedule taught by Yangshen. We translate that questions into the stock of queries in that we say select the course, the course year and semester from our name brand where um, Dr. Chef suggests course and all of the, all of the uh, literal or idea of terms are replaced by variable. And in the select state, in the select class, we may want to uh, project a set of variables that you want to get the result. You don't have to include all of them. So uh, if you want to uh, say that select all the variables from this query, then you can replace it as a star, similar to SQL. So let me execute this query and get the So here, if you execute the query that I put in the slide, you get uh, three columns. One is the course, year, and semester. And here, it shows you two results because I inserted them twice. <coughs> if you want to get the distinct result, you can put the distinct keyword and get one. Because in the previous result, even though they show the two rows, they are identical. So in the Sparkle, you specify the distinct for getting the set of results instead of the list of the results. In the set of your results, that means there is no repeated rows. years and semester. But in the in the original queries, we want to say that uh, all the courses are taught after 2013, right? So in that case, because the years is specified here, we need to put the constraints on the variable to say that that year must be greater than 2013. So for that, we go to the next part, that how to put the constraints on the variable. So for this is the example. So that means when we put a restriction on any variable, the results that are in the binding of this variable, it must uh, satisfy these conditions. So in our in, in our result set, the year is 2014, so it it satisfied, right? If you put the the field of the years is uh, before 2013, you may not get any result in our data set. So this is the Sparkle query. You can run it for like after 13, select other courses and schedule have an option after or before 2013. You can execute this query and uh, modify it so that you can get different results. Another kind of a restriction is on the uh, string. In that case, we use a regular expression. So in this regular expression, you you also impose the <coughs> conditions on the variable. But instead of um, using the comparison, you use the uh, regular expression. Let's say in this case, it must start with F, right? Because for semester, we have uh, uh, spring, summer, or uh, winter, or fall. So if we start with F, we know that it starts with, it, it is only for the fall. This is what it, this is one example of uh, putting the conditions on the screen. And these are 
are some additional information so where you can find the um, filter expression or the regular expression with it is uh, x query and x path for the regular expression and for the filter um, you can you can find not only the filter expression but uh, on the construct of Sparkle within this link like Adia Sparkle queries. And as I said before, like we can specify as many uh, filter expressions or any patterns that we want. So, so we have over the. Uh, Basic graph patterns, and then, and then what? And then, what was? What we just over? So we finish the uh, basic graph patterns, and then uh, filtering expression, right? So two of them. So the next one is the optional patterns. So when you specify the patterns, there are some of them that you you think that it may or may not exist, right? So in that case, we use the optional. So when we use the optional, within this uh, graph, it specifies the conditions that this, this triple <coughs> patterns may or may not exist. If it does exist, get the result. If it does exist, ignore them as if they're not there. It's, that's why it's optional. So in this example, we say that like um, the causes case assistant. So these patterns doesn't exist in our knowledge base, right? If I remove the optional from this query, you will not get any result. Do you know why? Because the way that these triple patterns is interpreted is it's implicitly put an end, logical end, between the triple patterns. That means, and it should digits the cause, and that cause is offered some time. And that time is year and his semester. If we say and the cause has a system, without, if we remove the optional, so in that case, this graph patterns doesn't match any subgraph in our knowledge base. Because of that, the result is empty. But if we put the optional here, so that means do not reject the answers because some part of the query patterns does not match. So if we put the optional here, even though the process is assistant, there is no triples with these patterns, Still, it get on the result that we had specified for the courses, semester, and year. And this is the this is the Sparkle query. If you notice that, so in the in this Sparkle query, every triple patterns are separated by a period. Right. Similarly, the optional patterns is also separated from other patterns by a dot or period here. Do you ever run this query? Or do you, you know the result? So let Let's run one example from here. That uh, finding out the causes of for some time his year, semester, and the system. If let's say if we remove the system, remove the optional, what do we have? <coughs> Nothing, right? But if we put back the optional. get some result. So that is the purpose of uh, the optional clause. So we use it when we use it when we have the 
um, some triple patterns that exist for some instances, but it doesn't exist for some other instances. But in the query, you want to get all of them. <coughs> so this the uh, this optional clause provide extra information for the resources that we have. So the last graph patterns is the alternative patterns. So for in our example, let's say for some courses we just specify the semester or some courses that we just specify the year, right? So this query, this um, this this uh, query patterns allows us to uh, get the set of course the course get uh, on the year union get the semester of the course so two courses we are using the same variable so how do we interpret this uh, query so in this we say that the course offers some time and it is a year so that means in this in this, um, within this triple patterns, we want to say that the given the courses and the year of the course, right? And in the second <coughs> patterns, we say that uh, the courses offer the term and term is semester. So that means give me all the courses and the semester that they will offer. The union keyword that merge the two set of results into the same result set. So let's, let's say you can execute these um, patterns independently from these patterns. After that, you merge the result. So basically, it's a union operation. So in this, in this uh, Sparkle queries, we put the uh, union clauses into the Sparkle queries where we select the course, years, and semester. So that means for the same course, in the in one row, it may not it may specify either year or semester. It may not it may not have both at the, in the same row. It will look like this. So if you look at the first row, we have the course and the year without semester. Right? In the second row, we have the course and the semester without the year. Because this is because in our Sparkle query, we specify the first row is the result of the first class, the first class. is the result of this one. Because of that, like uh, there's no rows that can specify both. Are you sleepy? Yeah, I feel sleepy. If I were like at, uh, sitting like that. Yeah. yeah, guys ask questions if you're not clear. This is your time. <coughs> She's going to give you hard exercises if you... Oh no, the exercises are not hard. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I already posted the exercise online, so you can look at that. So these are the, the, the uh, Sparkle queries for years and semester. So basically what we have just covered is how to write a Sparkle query, select query. 
So we know how to write the insert query, how to insert your triples into the Spark main point with your name, within your name thread. And then you know how to write Sparkle queries with uh, many kind of, with four types of graph patterns, right? You know how to specify the filter, uh, union, and uh, basic graph patterns. However, in the Sparkle, they support multiple types of queries similar to, so beside the insert and delete, right? So for four for type of query forms to retrieve the information from your RDF dataset. So the first one is the select queries. So in this query, you write a select Sparkle query with and select a set of variables, right? So the purpose of the select queries is to re return the result binding for your variable. And the second type, so we just call this uh, part, and for the second type of the queries is the construct. So in this construct query, you return a, a, a new graph. Specify by the graph template that you specify. And the third query is the ask query. So basically you say like a query, query, that query like, um, does double shared stitch any cost in the form, right? And then like double shared stitches cost in the form, you translate them into uh, graph patterns. And you ask, you ask that query. So the result of that query is not specific causes that double shared stitch. But it return a true or false value. Just say that if it stitch any cost, return true. If not, no, then false. So that is the ask queries. <coughs> the last one is the describe queries. So you know a URI, right? And you want to say, give me all the information related to that uh, URI or resource. You use this describe query. This queries, they say that this query is not important because uh, the Sparkle queries doesn't have semantics for that. Simply, you just say describe and then resource. But if you want to use it in your application, you can use it, otherwise you can ignore it. So this is the uh, construct queries. If you look at this, the from, it will have construct from and where, similar to the select, right? The difference here is we have construct clause instead of select clause. Now from and where, this part is similar to the select queries. So in the construct, we we cause this this keyword or it allows us to specify the graph created by from from by um, the variables or the URI from the web class. So let's say here, right, we say that uh, this, this set of people saying that give me all the causes that offer at some year, like any year or any semester. So these are the, the four triple patterns for that conditions. So in this construct, it says that for the growth variable from here, for every variable from a uh, growth of this, create one triple, say, prof is type professor. And similarly, for all the, for the cost here, create a graph with the cost type, variable <coughs> cost type cost. So what the query engine would do is, it will execute this part first, right? Execute this part, and select all the variables bindings. After that, it will construct a graph for with this form, with this pattern. Questions? Sorry, somebody just asked. Yeah. So I just have a question. So in this, this is the structure of the 
But remember that this is not the insert query. This is the construct queries. So the it construct the result construct a graph for the result. It doesn't mean that it will insert that graph back to the triple stop, right? So that means the um, the result of this query is a graph. It's only a graph. And this is the ask queries. So for the you start with the prefix if you have any, and then the ask queries. After the ask query is the conditions. Say whether this this query it will validate if this set of triples has any result or any solutions for this or not. And the the um, the output of that is the true or false. If you execute the construct queries, this is what you get. They say that I mentioned type professor and then uh, some calls with three you know, array type calls. So this is the graph that we had uh, from the conditions. And the last query. So for the ask queries, it just return true or false. And the last one if you just say uh, describe and ship and click the run queries, it will show you that like I should type professor and ditch the web through for no cost. So I included all the queries for four type of queries in the uh, site. You can run and modify them and play with them. So for, for this uh, sparkle part, there's not much things to remember, right? Basically, based on the syntax, you can run like the sample queries on your own, on your data set or like any, any like other any basically like any set of triples. So I provided the sparkle endpoint so that you don't need to install one for yourself. So for the uh, homework, let me go to the homework three. So in this homework, use the uh, set of triples that you created from your homework tool. And this is the Sparkle endpoint. And remember that it is a local network. So you need to use a wire connection. And uh, all the Sparkle queries from the three questions must be executed from this one. So for the first part, to prepare the set of triples for your name graph, you write, you need to write one Sparkle queries to insert the, the triples that you created from the homework tool into one name graph. And this is the conventions that um, the name graph, it should be in a form that will see that right that edu causes homework tool and your first name. And for this, that this is for the first question. And for the Question two and three, you need to come up with the sparkle queries for yourself because you created a set of triples. You know what are the patterns that you have, right? So, uh, for the question two, you create two sparkle set of queries, return the classes and properties. These are just example, and then one sparkle queries to return all the classes and properties. The purpose of that is for you to demonstrate that the union. 
our keyboard. And the last, in the last uh, question, like uh, you come up with two questions from your uh, data set and then translate them into Sparkle queries, make sure all of them works. So the way that I would go on this is, uh, I would go to the triple store and select all the graph. So for each, for, for each of your names, right? Uh, I will execute your queries against your name graph. So basically, I just run the queries and get the result. So make sure that you use the, the right name graph. So any questions? So this for this uh, exercise is kind of boring because uh, you need to work on the syntax and correct all the errors related to the grammar. Any questions? No? Okay, then uh, we'll see you next year. So if you run these queries, you get all the knowledge that you want. So this is what different from the other data model, right? In Adia, even though you don't know the schema, you still can explore the data set to, to infer the schema. So in this data set, let's say you say if you have billion of triples, you don't want to list them all, right? In that case, we can always specify the conditions, like uh, let's say if you just want to get the set of a property. So these queries give you like all the properties that you have here right gradually you what you need to do is modify these graph patterns what you need to do is just uh, replace the variable with uh, add your terms, it can be like any terms, depends on the specific data set, right? You start with reading orders, order triples from that knowledge base, and then next you want to say, uh, show me all the classes, and then show me all the properties, and then if you replace this with the properties or with the class, you get all the triples related to that one. So basically, as, well, as long as you give me a Sparkle endpoint, I can explore all of those schema knowledge from your data set. We have small data set only, but large data set would be easy task to find the schema knowledge. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so even though they use different namespace, right? It is fine as long as you say it is a, a prop. This is a properties. It will list you. It will list all the properties in the data set for you. And uh, let's say like this, right? And let's say digits, right? You go here and you will say p add your best domain d. And P IDFS range range. Oh, I need to find the IDFS. So the, I need to find the domain range of that with the prefix IDFS.
So if you run the query like this, it will return the web the widget's property, domain of professor, and range is cost. So basically, with the basic triple patterns, you can query any kind of information in the triple. It depends on how you populate the uh, triple patterns. Okay. So this is just one example of that. You can also do the same for saying that uh, S and uh, RDF S, RDF I, RDF S plus. Okay. This will show you all the um, classes. Oops, I didn't define this, sorry. Or RDF type, some things, class. So this will show you on the instances and the classes. And if so we have two instances, initiate and web 3.0, and the two classes, professors and course. If you want to get the set of classes, and then you remove the S from here, it will show you only the classes. Simply like that. But in the um, exercise, you need to use certain construct like um, Using the uh, not just the select queries, but uh, one of the construct like uh, ask, describe, or a construct, and then so basically you when you go through the uh, homework three, you will be able to write all kind of Sparkle queries, insert, select, and uh, construct as or describe, and all the examples are in the slide. You just modify that, uh, the modify that query to make it work for your uh, triple patterns. Okay. Any more questions? If you have any, so when you are running your queries, if you have any questions, you can just uh, bring your laptop to my office and then I can help you with that. But let's make it uh, an office hours.